Hello and welcome back to Coding with T. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn two things. The first one is how to select single row, how to display checkboxes along with the table and how to select single or multiple rows, how to select all and also unselect all rows at a time. And the second thing is how we can delete the data from the table. So first of all, let's quickly look what we are going to create. And we are inside the project of our admin panel. You can test this project. It is currently available publicly and I'll drop the link in the description or you can get it from the codingwitty.com. Okay, let's go to the categories, click on it because currently we are working with the categories and we started working by fetching all the data. We learn to use MVC pattern. We try to differentiate and use the separation of concern. We have different view, then we go to the controller fetch data from repository and all the process you can watch the previous video then we learn in the next tutorial how to add the sorting something like this after that we covered in the previous tutorial search so let's say we're going to search something like this and in today's tutorial we are going to focus on adding a checkboxes like this select all the rows available unselect them you can select one two or whatever you want multi-select and the second thing that we're going to learn is this delete option because in the next video we are going to to see before focusing on edit and the create new category we're going to learn that how we can handle all the data inside abstract class which is the next tutorial so whereas in today's tutorial what we're going to focus we're going to see that when i'm going to click on this row it is going to check that if this row is selected or not selected this means we need a boolean how many booleans we need we need booleans uh, until 23 or the number of records we have inside this table so we are going to display 23 records this means we need 23 booleans for each row and the second thing over here is the on change event which is going to be triggered for each row when i'm going to click on this you can see some state occur so there is a function which is on change for each row whenever there is change inside it we will be able to get its state currently the state is true means this row is selected and on change is going to give us the true value and when i'm going to select it select it again we can easily toggle these values from the list of selected rows. So let's get started with today's tutorial. Okay, we are creating Flutter e-commerce admin panel and we are about to complete this e-commerce admin panel. We are at the last section and in the previous videos, you can see we covered fetch data, which is a very important tutorial. Then we learn how to do the sorting inside our data table. We learn search to be implemented on real data using data table. Then in today's tutorial, we're going to learn selecting single row, multiple rows and also how to delete the rows. And in the next tutorial, which is a very important tutorial, we are going to convert the complete code into a code code called abstract class so that we can implement our classes or the functions based on our abstract class so we will be able to reduce the code inside our application so let's get started okay, so we are inside our category controller and we are inside shop controller category and inside we have a category controller so first of all as we created these two lists these are the list of type category model but for the rows either that row is selected or not we have to create the same number of list but list of type boolean so so this list is again a type of rx means dot obs observable whenever there is change inside it it will be able to redraw its design and it is a type of boolean means each row will have one single boolean value so using this selected row we will go to the fetch data where we have assigned all items and filtered items we are going to generate the same number of boolean values inside the selected rows so let's call selected rows dot assign all we are not going to assign these values rather we are going to use list.generate function and we are going to generate them as or using the all items dot length so this much number of lists should be generated and generator is a function so using this function it will have some value but we are not going to use that value so that's why all the values will by default remain false at a semicolon this means create a list how much elements of that list whatever is the number inside the all items dot length length and all the values will be false by this way we have selected rows created now let's go to the category design in the screens category and in the all categories we are going to head towards the table source which is the row design because the row is going to change its state so this is the function for the row to create a row and 
this is the data row two widget which actually representing one single unique row so inside this data row we have two functions first one is selected what we want to do when this row is selected we need to call the category controller controller dot selected rows we want to get the current selected row using the index property of that row and we are going to assign this true or false to this selected means let's say this is the first row and this get row is going to send the index of zero means first row and we're going to get the selected row value by default it will be false so at zero index selected row is also false so that false will be assigned to this selected and then the second value is on selected change it is a function which is going to give us some value so using fat arrows again call the controller dot selected rows again at current index will be equal to what Whatever value we receive when the row is going to be toggled and if this value is nullable we will assume that it is false so we will assign false if it is nullable to selected row at current index so let's say again at zero index we receive the zero index at first we receive the value at zero index is false false will be assigned to selected and row will not be selected because it is false then we have on selected change let's say we trigger or click on that row and by clicking on that row this function is going to trigger and it will have some value as a parameter which is a boolean value and if that row is selected this means previously it was false now it is selected this value will be true and we're going to assign this true to this controller selected index selected rows at current index this means that now selected rows at zero index have a value of true this means that now the first row will be selected so this is how we identify the change but here's a trick when i'm going to run this Currently, you can see a checkbox along with all the checkboxes for each individual row. And when I'm going to click on this, you can see a splash effect is being taken place inside this row, but the checkbox is not toggling its state. And the reason is the same reason because selected row is changing itself, but we have not used any OBX, which is responsible to redraw the design. We cannot redraw the design inside a class because design is not here. So let's go to the design, which is that table or dart this is the actual table and here we have that rows we want to update this complete table whenever there is change inside the selected rows and if you follow the previous tutorial we update the design whenever there is change inside the filtered items because we are searching and when we are searching then we want to update the filter items and this is what we do so we are going to control d to copy this controller dot selected rows dot length so whenever there is change now inside the selected rows this obx is going to trigger the redraw of design but we are not going to return these two text strings rather we are going to return our actual table but these two text strings are just for the redraw of the design now let's save the code okay our application is now running and let's click on this first row and this time you can see the redraw occurs and this row is now selected at zero index and also we have a checkbox at the top when i'm going to toggle the state you can see the complete table is now changing its state from not selected to selected and also when i'm going to toggle it again you can see the state is changed so we can select one or multiple rows and same way if you want to add these rows inside your record then you have the selected rows so you, based on the selected rows you can easily extract all the rows with the actual data at that specific index so that's it for the first part now let's come to the deletion part because if you scroll at the bottom in the last cell or in the last column we have on delete press button and when we are going to delete this we have to create a function something delete this row so controller dot confirm and delete item so this is the function that i'm going to create this function is first going to display a pop-up currently nothing happened when i'm going to click on this trash icon and if you see the currently running application and when i'm going to click on this trash icon you can see a pop-up with the cancel and ok button by clicking on the cancel that pop-up is gone but let's go to the last page and in here we have three records and i'm going to delete the last one so let's click on it and now also you can see we have 23 records in total by clicking on ok button a loader appear and the previous pop-up is gone and after that loader you can see we have 22 records success message also that record is deleted from the index or from this table so this is what we are going to learn for that whenever this on delete pressed action is going to be triggered i want to first display a pop-up to the user that if you want to delete that row or not so create a method again inside 
category controller in which we're going to receive the category that is going to be deleted and inside this function I'm going to use get dot default dialog which is this one let me quickly create the design okay I have created the design so it is a get dot default dialog title is delete item content is are you sure you want to delete and we have two buttons confirm button and cancel button the confirm button design is inside the size box specific width of 60 and elevated button whenever this elevated button is going to be triggered because it is a confirm action I want to again call another function which is actually going to perform the deletion and this is the styling of that button let's import t sizes class and after that elevated button or after that confirm button we have the cancel button again a size box outline button and whenever this on press is going to be triggered instead of deleting this row we are going to go back to the previous screen it means get dot back is going to close this pop up and rest is the design now let's create this function delete on confirm this means that delete only when it is confirmed that we want to delete this item so it is actually a category so let's pass the category and we're going to receive that category as a function down below inside this function the first thing i'm going to use the t full screen loader dot stop loading so it is navigator dot of context dot pop means it is going to remove the pop-up which is this one so previously it was displaying the pop-up that are you sure you want to delete this item so first of all we are going to remove that pop-up and then we're going to use the same t full screen loader but this time we're going to display pop-up circular and this is the pop-up circular that is going to display a simple circular loader so if we go to the t circular loader this is the design of circular loader and if you want to download this code you can get that from the link down below in the description or visit codingwith.com now once this loader started we are going to call first of all use the await sign and add the async at the top we have to create a function delete file store data using category repository dot delete category and category repository instance is already created at the top which we created at the first video of the backend section and if i'm going to go to the category repository in which we have only one function get all categories now i'm going to copy this one and create a new function for delete category so we have a function called delete categories it is not going to return anything and it is going to receive the category id as a string and at the top we have a try and then some customized catch firebase exception format exception platform and at the last we have a simple catch but in between we have only one single line which is a wait sign because of the cloud query we can use firebase firestore instance directly over here dot collection and what collection we want to download make sure it should be exactly same otherwise it is not going to find any collection and the record which we want to delete so we have the same exact categories over here so we want to find a document which we want to delete based on the category id and then simply call the delete option and this is going to delete the category for us and after this we have to once this record is deleted instead of again refreshing all the data using fetch data to fetch the latest data because we have to make sure that we are aligned perfectly with the current data we have all items filtered items and selected rows are exactly same so there's one method which is to fetch all the data again which will cost a lot of reads and it was and it will be a costly operation so to avoid that we are going to use a simple method i'm going to create a function which is going to remove list items or update all the lists this is the method remove item from list and we're going to pass the same category model to this function that this category should be removed from your list so you have all items dot remove and we're going to pass that category filtered items dot remove and selected rows dot assign all generate a new list and make all the list as false and then this update is optional currently it's not needed but if you want to forcefully update the design then you can use that update as well and now we just have to call that function over here and inside that function pass the category so call that function pass the category and at the end simply stop the loading again because this loader was rotating or loading we have to stop that loading we have to display a success message loaders dot success snack bar this is how we are going to define our success snack bar and we are going to pass the title and message and also make sure because it is a cloud query so we have to wrap everything with a try catch so cut everything from here and paste it inside the try and inside the catch we are going to same do stop the loading but instead of success message we're going to display the error snack bar title and message will be whatever we receive as an exception now let's try to call the confirm and delete item which we already did inside our row so let's refresh it 
okay so all the categories are loaded let's go to the next screen and let's try to delete this test category click on this trash icon and we can see a pop-up with a cancel and ok button so let's click on cancel it is dismissed successfully let's again go to the trash icon click on ok and we can see the loader previous pop-up is gone and successfully item deleted and also that test is gone from the list and down below you can see we have 19 as total list this means whenever we are going to update the local list items and whenever there is change in that list the table is going to redraw itself again and based on that we are able to see the latest list without that deleted item instead of fetching all the data again from firebase so by this way we have completed our these two tasks for today's tutorial i hope you learn something new and if you have any questions you can ask me down below in the comments and once again if you are new to this channel make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified for all the upcoming videos once again thank you for watching and take care